Hey again, guys, and welcome back. Um, I've got five packages. Um, I actually don't know what's in a few of them because, uh, yeah, been kind of loopy lately, not sleeping well, so uh, excuse the weirdness of this episode. But um, other than that, let's get started. First one up is from one of you folks. Uh, this is from Larry. Larry sent me an email, told me that he's sending me a tool to my P.O. box. Uh, so yeah, this is my P.O. box, but it will be changing soon since this P.O. box does not allow courier mail. Also, I switched my um, Sharpie into an actual Sharpie branded Sharpie to block out the addresses and it um, takes way longer to dry. So, you know, just a note. Um, so, yeah, I don't actually know what's in here, but he sent, he says he sent one to a pile of stuff. And of course, I never miss a pile of stuff video. So, um, he said I should know what this is, but I guess, you know, I don't remember anything. So it's in a, a C270 webcam box. I'm going to explain some more about this. Ooh, a note. IC pin tool. Best used with ICs. Set the pins to socket or PC board width. Place IC pins up in slot, lay handle uh, over top, then squeeze two halves together. Woods are padauk, purple heart poplar, wenge with 24 karat gold leaf and casting resin. Thank you for the excellent videos. Oh, well, thank you. I like your easy, quiet manner and the subjects you choose. Being a Canuck helps too. Wink, wink. Well, thank you, Larry. Um, I've got a little bit to say about this, but first let me take a look. Ooh. That is fancy. So you lay this. Let's see. Place IC pins up in slot. So there. And then you lay the handle over top and squeeze the two halves. Wow. So these are definitely mobile pieces. They have some sort of posts in the middle. This is some fancy stuff. It's got like a high gloss finish and you've got little um, turned pin headers there. I'm not sure what these are for, but that's the gold leaf inside. Oh, there, you got the bolts that are through bolted. Fancy. Well, we're going to have to get a little bit closer look at this and we're going to have to get a IC with bent pins, which is pretty much every IC I got from China. So I just want to quickly show you the beauty of this. The finish is impeccable. Look at that. These woods. So that one's fastened on somehow. Probably glued, I'm guessing. I don't know if you can get a staple or a nail that small through it or a pin. The handiwork is excellent. They've got the You've got the uh, two guide pins here, which are these bolts here. Like even the sides look, it's all super well done, varnished. Very fancy. I know the focus is a little off, but it's all I could really do. And um, so yeah, Larry actually wants to give a couple of these away. Um, he's going to post hit a comment underneath this video with his email and you can email him to um, have the chance to get one of these for free, but you have to cover shipping. So I think he said it was something like uh, 15-ish dollars for shipping. And also because this is such a beautiful tool, it deserves nothing but the best. So this is a, a triple five timer that needs its pins straightened. So let's see, I'm going to put it like so, lay the bar down onto it. And then I guess you press and you squeeze. Oh, look at that. That did a pretty good job. Just this one pin that's still uh, canted off to Timbuktu. But I can easily adjust that. There we go. That's a neat tool. Hmm. I kind of feel precious about these kinds of things. I really don't want to use them because they kind of stand, you know, on their own as an art piece. But Larry did say, um, you know, <laughs> it's meant to be used. So there we go. Pretty neat. It's 
so we can throw this into a breadboard. And I have to say, uh, thank you. I don't really know, you know, what to say about this. This is this is very cool. This is like probably the thing I got sent that required the most amount of care, attention, time, and material sourcing. So yeah, Larry's retired. He likes to do these and he wants to give them away. So check the comment section below. Uh, you will probably find his comment there. Thanks again. Moving along from a very uh, carefully crafted uh, piece of tooling to something that is uh, not that at all. Uh, so this one here is actually sent in from your for review from Banggood. Um, link in the description if you want to get one before the review, but I mean, you know, probably should get subscribed for the review as well. I am a big fan of Unity tools. Uh, if I can pick one up, I will definitely. So when my Banggood contact asked me if I wanted to check this thing out for review, I said, of course. Uh, so this is the UT622, is it now? Yeah, UT622A. And this is a tool I don't have yet. This is a LCR meter. Got some sort of packing list? Test report. Oh, interesting. Okay, and then a little card. We've got some software on these little mini CDs, which I definitely don't have a way to read. Little manual. Shorting bar. A uh, USB charger, um, USB mini B, and a couple of leads. So yeah, this is this is a LCR meter. So LCR means uh, inductance, capacitance, resistance meter. Um, and there are things like uh, motor windings and um, sort of um, inductors and capacitors that you just really can't test on a benchtop multimeter or a handheld multimeter so you really need an LCR specific meter. I don't have one, now I do. Um, I think the really cool thing about this thing is that there's actually a lithium battery in here. So you don't have to put double A's, you do have to keep it charged. Um, but yeah, it's USB charging right there. Uh, there's also, you know, some sort of um, software for PC for sure, but uh, this thing should come charged. Oh no, you can't see that screen at all, right? Oh, this is a dim screen. Okay, let me see if I can adjust the brightness and uh, adjust the camera so you can see. So just right off the bat, I want to say this is a fancier piece of test gear uh, than I've ever owned pretty much. Um, LCR meters are quite specific for tasks. So they measure like capacitance, but also like um, equivalent series resistance. And they also run their tests at specified frequencies. You see up here the frequency. Um, the first thing though is it did ship in Chinese language. So to change it to English, press and hold the utility button. And then it's the option right below the little, um, I think that's a brightness. Oh look, can I go higher on brightness? I can, but it doesn't do very much. Okay, and then you hit that to go back. So you just change that English line to uh, from Chinese to English. Um, I'm set up here in inductance mode. I have an inductor. I have no idea what this is going to read. Um, but we're at least going to do a test, and then I'm going to have to play with this thing a fair bit before doing the review. So if you need an LCR meter, yeah, go ahead and, uh, you know, compare this with your other options. Um, how do you actually do the test now? Huh? Aha! So 1.32 uh, millihenries with an equivalent series resistance. A little bit of a scratch on the plastic there. Um, not on the screen, on the plastic protector. And the equivalent series resistance at 1 kilohertz of 1.34 ohms. And I think if I increase the frequency, um, that should have a higher, let's see here should have a, a higher uh, series resistance. Um, go? Yeah, so there we go. So I moved it up to 10 kilohertz. We have 1.19 millihenries and the ESR of 12 ohms. So at, you know, at 10 kilohertz, it'll 
act as if it was a 12 ohm resistor. Interesting. This thing has another winding. Let's see if the other winding is any different. And go. No, very similar. So probably it's like a common mode choke probably. It has both windings, um, the same diameter uh, wire and the same amount of turns around the ferrite core. Let's do a capacitor. Got a random film capacitor here. I don't even, there's no numbers on it. I think I got it from a um, CFL bulb. Uh, and here I'll just change that to capacitance and go. So 45 nanofarads. Uh, I don't know what D is, but let's go series resistance. Yeah, series resistance, sure. Go. Negative 346 ohms at 10 kilohertz. Mm -hmm. uh, let's change the frequency down to 100 hertz. Oh, wait, the resistance up here. What have I done? That's resistance. No, I want capacitance change this there we go go there we go 46.455 nano farads at um, 34 kilo ohms and if I change the frequency to 100 let's go 10 kilohertz same amount of uh, farads but um, actually uh, less resistance yeah that makes sense right yeah capacitors let AC through yeah that makes sense so, yeah, again, I'm going to uh, use this a fair bit more before I can actually do a review. But I can tell you now that the build quality while I was trying to figure this out um, is pretty freaking awesome. This thing is like solid like a tank. And you saw how quick it comes up with its measurements. Like, this thing is fantastic. So, yeah, Look for this in uh, the future of the channel. I also want to try out uh, testing a whole bunch of stuff. So yeah, if you're interested in um, me learning this device with you, then let me know in the comments. On to the next one. Next one up is this one here, which is measuring instrument. And this was $24.06. This is actually uh, quite expensive. Uh, June 24th arrived August 9th. Um, hmm, just remembered what's in here, and I may not have batteries for them. These are temperature and humidity meters, self-contained, because um, I am starting to gather a lot of uh, 3D printing filament. I'm using it quite often. Um, but I would like to know at what humidity level they are. So I kind of want to put one of these inside each and every Ziploc bag. Oh no, yeah, no batteries. Dang it. Um, so yeah, I want to put one of these inside every bag. And I also have that uh, filament dryer and uh, the electric one from the last mail bag. And some people were complaining that there's nowhere for the humidity to go. So I want to stick this on the inside permanently so I have an idea of... Is it just heating or is it heating and, you know, reducing humidity? So those are all tests I want to do. But right now I'm going to have to try and find the proper batteries for these things. I actually had to raid some of uh, these things that I had previously uh, in order <laughs> to get some batteries. So, yeah, we won't know if they're all working just yet. Oh, it works with just one. Nice. So it says 23 degrees C, obviously, in my hands, and 64% um, humidity, but I think that's just going to take a little bit for it to um, adapt. So, yeah, I've got uh, 10 of these here, so they're about uh, $2.40 each, but it's just because, you know, I didn't want to run out of them. I'm going to use them for quite a few things. They should all be this style with the um, humidity and the temperature at the same percentage or at the same size I should say oh maybe it is 68 percent humidity down here it is raining outside so you know maybe that's why and I am in the basement let's go on to the next one because I definitely can't test all of these next one up is this one here connectors uh, $6.46 US uh, claimed 
Um, this one, I don't know if this is what's inside, but if if it's what I think it is, eight dollars and thirty cents um, Canadian. The June twenty first ordered and August sixteenth arrived. There it goes. It is. Um, these are pin headers. They're female pin headers. And these are special because they are turn pin. So instead of it being the sort of uh, slotted style females, these are actually like literally round pins. And even these pins are circular. I have a project where I want to put in and out microcontrollers or even um, other devices that have pin headers and the flat uh, female style you know the classic style that, that we're all used to um, they're a little bit hard to push in and out and they don't make a great connection these here make an even better connection than those and they go in and out with such ease they're just beautiful to work with so if you want to add and remove stuff off into your circuits, um, these turn pins are the way to go. I bought a whole bunch here. I don't actually know how many. Probably something around like 25 or I don't know, a lot. Because shipping is kind of expensive these days. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, then three, six, nine. So I bought 20 uh, of these things just to keep in stock um, and because, you know, shipping so expensive that when you buy multiple things, shipping becomes a smaller percentage of the total cost. So yeah, uh, these things are going to be great. I'm going to be using them sparingly, especially because um, stuff from China is getting quite expensive and, you know, that's a lot of friggin' money for pin headers. But they're worth having in stock, so if you don't have any, Order them before you need them. Uh, this took quite a while to come in, too. You know, a month. No, June. Two months. Almost two months. And last, but hopefully not least, uh, module times five. I hope this is what I think it is. It came in today, June 21st to August 17th, $23.28. Uh, man, that's like over 50 bucks for the mailbag. Uh, good thing AdSense is turned on so I can make uh, 46 cents back on this. Huzzah! Yep, yeah, these are exactly what I thought they were, which is good. Um, these are the final Arduinos. The Arduinos, the only ones left that I don't actually have. And that is an Arduino. I think it's a Nano? Yeah, Nano. So it's an Arduino Nano, well, clone Arduino Nano, come on, what am I, freaking John D. Rockefeller here? Uh, so these are clones, they were actually very expensive, they were almost five bucks each. Um, but um, I was so frustrated with a recent project um, where I couldn't get this thing to, to program, I couldn't get my Pro Minis to program. Is this a Pro, hold on a sec. Okay, yes, they are nanos. Uh, sorry, I warned you about the loopiness. So, uh, yeah, my Pro Minis uh, with the programmer, and I couldn't find my programmers. And, and anyways, this is a huge frustrating moment. And I figured uh, for prototyping small projects, I want something, uh, the small factor Arduinos, and I want one with the um, USB to serial converter built in. So that's what these are. If you're like a total beginner, and you want to make small projects, uh, this guy, the Nano, this is what you should get. So I'll leave a link in the description below. So I got five of them here um, because they will be going in my stockpile as always. But um, yeah, I need to do more microcontroller stuff. It's coming. I don't have the time right now because I'm back to teaching. Um, however, it looks like I will have some unplanned unwanted time off uh, November, December, and I'm thinking of doing a push in um, November to make some sort of December lots of videos things because I need to catch up on a lot of stuff. So 
this will probably be part of it. I'll probably do comparisons of Arduinos, the amount of uh, memory involved, and all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, if you got ideas, stuff you want to see on a video blitz in December, uh, let me know in the comments below. I always like ideas. But yeah, these just Arduino Nanos. Nothing special, but uh, definitely a welcome addition. And this luscious lump of lovely ludicrousies makes up today's mailbag video. I want to thank, um, well, first of all, I want to thank Larry for sending me this thing. Uh, it's beautiful and handcrafted, and I cannot guarantee that I'm going to use it all the time because I don't want to mar it up, but it will definitely be sitting in my workshop as at least as an art piece. Um, and if you insist that I use it, well, then let me know and then I'll use it more. Um, also, make sure to check the comments below for your chance to get one of these. Thank you, Banggood, for sending me products uh, to outfit my shop and to make um, reviews for everybody to enjoy. And thank you to my Patreon patrons for paying for this expensive stuff in the middle as well. Thanks for watching, everyone. Catch you in the next one.